Hi, I'm Lily. Today I'm going to show you how I made the little puppets by hand and from scratch that I've used in my latest stop motion animation Go Happy You're Alone. If you haven't seen the animation yet, I'm going to put a link above and in the description below. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you the entire process to create those little puppets, including the whole body, multiple heads, removable eyelids, and the clothing. This animation was the first time I tried to create some animal puppets, so I'm going to show you how I made my little bear and the badgers. I hope you enjoy it! So to make the head, first I'm going to show you how I made the eyes. I used some white FIMO, make sure I have some clean hands and a clean board, and I shaped some little balls of clay, try to make them all the same size. Then I take a small piece of wire and gently press into the clay, that will flatten a little bit the top of the bowl and that will work in our advantage later on. I place them all onto a piece of timber that I can slide into the oven and cook for 15 minutes. Then I start to work on the eyelids. For that I cover every single bowl with a bit of aluminium foil. I use Super Scopy because that's my favorite clay. And I start shaping some eyelids in different sizes. Think about the eyes when it's barely open, half open, or completely closed. It's always best to create more eyelids than what you need, just to have some options later on. And then I cook it for even less than 10 minutes because they are so thin, they're cooked super quickly. When they're completely cold, I remove them and place them in a little box to avoid losing them. Then I remove all the aluminum foil and use some paint on a Q-tip to create the eye. Once it's completely set, I use a punch to create a hole in the middle and then very gently and slowly use a tiny drill bit to drill into my eye. Then I use a toothpick with some black gesso and gently insert it into the hole. It's always best to make more eyes than you need, so you have options later on. Now let's make the head. When I do my sculpting, I like to set up a few boxes to raise the level of the sculpting area. Then I use a sculpting wheel or turntable and use a bit of timber on some white tack to place it on top of it. Then I take a ball of aluminium foil and I wrap two aluminium wire around it, twist the wire together, and then I cut the excess and place it into my bit of timber. Then I use the polymer clay to cover the whole thing and start shaping it. I create some eye sockets and place my eyes into them. And then I add some clay all around the eyes. If your puppet is looking as weird as mine at that stage, that's completely normal. And then I keep adding some volume, so a little nose, some volume for the mouse, just slowly playing around with the clay using different tools. I use the uh, ball tool a lot to work on the head. I like to be able to remove it completely from the timber part to work on the neck, for example. Then you can start building the character into the head. Is it going to be a squarish head? Is it going to be an all rounded one? More you shape it, more you give it character. In this case, I wanted to have a kind of squarish face, but at the same time rounded and cute. I've added some volume for the cheeks and for the eyebrows as well, and make sure they are well blended. in. The nose is such an important part, so it's worth focusing some time on it to make sure it's the right fit for the face. Same for the mouth, take your time to curve it and shape it so it's nice and cute. For the ears, I like to apply them at the same time because then they're roughly the same height and the same volume and then slowly blend them in and shape them. And kept at it until I had a nice overall shape. Once I was happy with it, I decided I need to copy it to have multiple heads. To do that, I sliced the back of the head, hoping I will not get into the aluminium foil too early, to try to make a flat base. Then I used the hot glue gun to glue it to a piece of cardboard. And then I cut some more cardboard to create the walls that I touch with the hot glue gun. Make sure there's no gap and make absolutely sure of that, so otherwise you're gonna have silicone everywhere. That's the silicone that I use very often because it's quite affordable and set up super quickly. 
I used some clear plastic containers to measure the same volume of part A, part B, mix it up into one container, and then transfer it into another container to make sure it's properly mixed up together. And then I pour it from some height into the mold to try to remove as many bubbles as possible. Let it set for at least an hour, ideally two, and then you can remove it. I gently press it away from the heads, opening up with a Stanley knife to make sure I can free the wire. And then I press the silicone outwards and very carefully remove the heads. Now, when you work on molds like this, usually you pour some liquid resin, for example, and you just fill the mold, chop down. Here, you're working with clay. It's a bit less straightforward than that. First, I use some clay and rolled up into a shape of an eight and place them around the eye sockets. So by the time I place my eyes, they have somewhere to sit. Then I use my finger and press the eyes into position to try to keep them there. And then I start to apply some clay all around it to build up the volume and keep those eyes into position. And it's very tricky because as you can see, there's very little opening and I already have my two fingers in it. So it takes a bit of time and a bit of practice to be able to insert all the clay. Then I took a bowl of aluminum foil wrapped up with aluminum wire and cover up with clay and press it into position. Make sure the wire sits central to where it should be. Then I press the silicone inwards to try to shape the clay. Add a bit of clay. If it doesn't look pretty at the back, it doesn't matter because you're gonna cover it with hairs later on, so that's fine. Then very gently, you press the silicone outwards and you take your head out. Then you hope for the best, but quite often it turns into a bit of a mess. Usually the eyes are all over the place, so I start with putting them back where they should be and then I need to fill up the gaps. It's not straightforward, it takes a bit of practice, but it's so much time that you're gonna save making your little head. And by placing those heads next to each other, that helps making sure they look similar, because that's the whole point. Then I start to work on the hair. First, I apply a thin layer of clay all around the head, like a little helmet. Then I shape some little sausage of clay all around it and slowly press them onto the head and shape the hair. I keep at it and make sure I move the sculpting tool around instead of having just straight line to create more movement. I kept building the top of the head as well, applying some little sausage of clay. Don't just place them next to each other, place them on top of each other, all around. It's all about creating movement and volume before blending them together. Keep at it until you have a nice haircut and the style that you want your puppet to have. Once I'm completely happy with the hair, then I start to work on the eyebrows using a tiny little thin piece of clay and shaping it in place. Then I work on the mouth. It's always a bit tricky to get the right color, but sometimes it takes a few tests to get it right. And then once you're happy with one, you, you do exactly the same on the other head. Then I make sure I keep the exact colors of clay that I've used for the mouth, for the skin, and for the hair. Because when you animate the puppet later on, you're gonna need some touch-up. So it's always good to have the exact color on hand to do some touch-up. And the last thing, I add just a tiny bit of blush with the normal palettes of makeup, just to give it more life. Once they're finished, I cover them with cling film, so they're not gonna gather in dust, and they are just as clean as possible for when I'm ready to shoot the animation. So now let's work on the body. First, you make a little sketch to the right scale. As you can see, mine is the masterpiece. And then I take a permanent marker and mark inside of it where the skeleton will be and the shape of it. Then I use some wire. If you use some aluminum wire, it's nice and bendy, but if you only use that, sometimes the puppet is too soft. So for me, what I like is adding a bit of steel wire to give it some strength so I can control the puppets more when I animate it. I'm gonna show you how I use those different wires. First, I start with the aluminum wire, going from one hand to the other with a bit of extra, and I cut this one twice. 
Then with the aluminium wire, I go from one hand to the feet, always with a bit of extra, and cut it four times, two for each side. Then that's when I bring in the steel wire to go from one feet all the way up back to the other feet with a bit of extra. And I cut this one twice. There you have it. All the pieces are cut, I can start assembling it. So I start with one arm, twisting them together. Don't twist it too much or you're gonna weaken the wire, just very gently so they are holding together. Then I bring the steel wire and I wrap it up the top. That's getting tougher to uh, twist, but it's still manageable. And just keep at it and start following the sketch to try to get the right proportion with the skeleton. Once I'm happy with it, I can cut the extra on each hand and it's always good to double check with the ruler that they are the same size. Then I start working on the hands with a much thinner wire this time and start to shape the little fingers. I like to make them just a bit longer than needed because I can always cut them. So it's best to make them longer than shorter because you can always adjust them. Once I have my fingers shaped, I cut the extra, wrap the extra few time around the palm of the hands. And this is one done. I've done it twice, place them on top of each other, line the fingers up, and then I can cut the extra because that way the fingers are supposed to be the same size on each hand. And then I twist the wire to make sure the fingers are closing nicely. And then I've got my two hands ready. Then I place the hand on top of the aluminium wire and wrap the excess of the thin wire around the main skeleton. I also make sure I attach firmly the palm of the hands against the skeleton. Then I use some L-hook bolts. I found those one in the plastering session of the DIY store. They are supposed to be hollow wool anchor and I like to use them because for stop motion animation you need to reach the screws underneath the puppets, underneath the set and they are easier to handle than if you just have screws to manipulate. Then I use some wing nuts that are the perfect size to fit those specific L-hook bolts. I place the wing nuts in the feet in between the wire and use the wire to wrap all around it and try to have a tight fit. So using the little pliers can help for that. Then I use some mini puts to party pussy putty. I use roughly two thirds of a pack per puppet. Mix it up properly, it's better to use gloves. Start with the big mass on the torso, apply it in front and wrap it all around it and start to add some small volume of it all around the body. Try to keep the wire in between each component of the epoxy putty visible. Those will become the joints, so you need them to still be able to flex. And I kept at it, building the whole volume, using some sculpting tool is really handy for that. And I turn the puppet around, make sure it looks good from both sides, make sure the palm are firm. You can even shape a little bomb. This one is not the cutest bomb ever. And then I let it dry overnight. Usually I like to place a little bit of aluminium wire so it doesn't squish the back of the puppets. I like to make two of them at a time, it's easier. Once it's completely set, the next day I start to work on the coating. First I position them onto a piece of timber and I screw them from underneath. Then I add a bit of cotton around the waist and start covering with the first coat of clay, the super scalp in that case. Remove the excess, wrap it up, start to shape the clay. And then it's all about covering every joint so they are still flexible, but there's no gap in between them. So that takes a bit of practice as well. It's not gonna be perfect, that's fine. Try to slowly shape it to fill those gaps. Same with the finger, they're very small, so they are hard to shape, but after a while, it starts to look like a hand. And there you go. This one has a bit of a tummy. So as you can see, it's not perfect and that's absolutely fine because the top rubber is gonna cover it. So now the magical ingredient is dragon skin. It's a translucent rubber that is just brilliant. There are different types of dragon skin. I use the fast one. Then I use some silicone pigment that are made for this specific product. I have the flesh tone and brown tone and you can mix them around to create all the different skin tones you want. Then I use some little plastic cup and pour the same volume of part A, part B. Then mix them up in the plastic container. Add a tiny little bit of pigment. As you can see, it's barely anything, but that's more than enough already to color it. And then very important, I move the arms upwards 
because the gravity is going to play a big part in how the rubber set and if you have the arms downwards you're going to have problems later on. Then I start to apply the dragon skin. I always like to work with those lollipop stick. I've tried to do with paintbrush but I went back to the lollipop stick and just cover the whole thing and let gravity do its trick. I like to have a piece of timber at the, at the bottom because I can easily grab it, make sure from underneath all the parts are covered with the dragon skin. Then I let it dry at least for an hour and start to mix the second batch. For me it needs two coats in total, following the exact same method to cover the whole thing. Once it's fully and completely set, I can remove it from the base, use some scissor to cut the excess and trim the feet all around them. Then to place the head, I need to cut some opening. First, I remove a bit of the rubber at the top. Then I use a drill and very carefully try to drill as straight as possible. So at that stage, my puppet is finished. I usually brush a bit of baby powder on top of it to remove the shininess. But for some reason, I lost the footage of that part. And then you have it, your little body is ready. So now it looks good, but it's all naked. So you need some clothing. I place it onto a bit of tracing paper and start to draw the shape of the top. Now, as you can see, I'm not exactly a uh, professional in clothing and I eyeball usually everything and it has worked for me so far. So I trace the top and the trousers as well. Then I cut them out, fold them in half and try to cut in between those two lines. Then I copy this template onto a piece of fabric. I like to work with cotton, that's just easier. Using a fabric pen, I copy it twice, cut it, and then I start sewing all the edges first. You can pin it in position, but for me, I just fold it, press it firmly, and usually if you work with cotton, it holds, so you can uh, gently and slowly sew it together. Once I've done those two the same way, I press them against each other on the right side, line them up and then to the top part of the top. I always add a bit of a color to all my tops to cover the transition and try to hide the fact that you have the clay head that's gonna match into a rubber body. Then the top part is done and I decide to sew just one side because it's always tricky to pass it onto the puppets and that's the method that I found is the best for my little puppets to avoid damaging the hands. So that way I have only one hand that I have to very carefully and gently pass it through the sleeve and then once it's on there, I can start shaping the top and then closing on the other side. My true and tested method is to use a tissue box so I can place my puppet into it and it's gonna hold it in place without damaging the arms or the hand. And then I can gently fold the fabric and hand stitch to close it. Once the side is closed, I can keep going and close the sleeve as well. Once those two parts are done, I switch it around and finish the other sleeve. And there you go, the top is done. Then I follow the same method for the trousers. Copy the template twice onto a piece of fabric. I've also cut some little square and use some fabric glue to create the little pockets. Then I fold a piece of fabric in half, sew the edge, because by the time you reopen it, it looks like you've had two pieces of fabric when you only had one. Then I sew the top and the bottom of the trouser. I knew this trouser will fit underneath the top, so I wasn't too concerned about how the waist will look. Then I've added my little pockets, pinned them in place. and very slowly and gently sew them to the main fabric. So I have my little two parts, I place them on top of each other, line them up, and then close my little trouser. Turn them around. And look how cute! Now, it looks a bit too new, so I like to use my nail file and roughed up the fabric a bit to make it look more realistic and aged. Then I pass it on to my puppets, make sure it fits nicely under the top. 
I usually like to stitch all around my puppet so that the top fits with the bottom part and when you move the puppet around you don't start to have the skin showing or anything it stays in place then I roughen up the top as well to match the bottom. Now I was happy with this first look but I decided to create another one so I have my two puppets ready with the two sets of clothes. For the shoes this is my template as you see it's very small. I copied it onto a piece of Warbler, the brilliant thermoplastic that I use all the time. Use a permanent marker to copy it and then cut it. I also cut some little disc almost to go with that. Then I start to warm up the warbler, wrapped it around the edge of the feet and shape it. Then I warm up the other part of warbler, place it from underneath and wrap it all around the feet. And once it's warm, you can really sculpt it however you want. If the part that you put previously is still warm, they will bond to each other. Once I've made two of them, I let them completely cool down and I can trim them with a scissor from underneath. So I have the little wing nut fully accessible and the shoes sitting flat. To add some lace, I use some 3D paints. The one I use all the time is Pebbles and Relief and I let it dry for at least a few hours, ideally overnight. Now one last very important trick, if you just place your head into the body like that, the head is going to move around a bit, you're not going to have complete control, which you need for stop motion animation. So what I do is I usually apply some white tack around the wire and that way when you press it into the body it's it's stuck there so that way you can control it a bit better that's something i use for every single one of my puppets before i animate them now i'm going to talk about the little bear it was the first time that i tackle a puppet like this and i knew it's going to be a beast of clay so i start to think about which movement i needed from these puppets i wanted my hands to move a little bit the feet and maybe the top but i knew that it's going to be limited so before i start to work on the main body first i made some clothes shaped them up with some black fimo placed them onto a piece of rounded aluminium foil i've also made some little balls for the eyes and then i cooked them for 10 minutes now I knew my bear would be sitting in the sofa, so I found a piece of wood that is roughly the same height than the sofa, place it onto a platform, then use a skeleton that I've done previously, attach it to the platform with some screws from underneath, and tape the piece of wood in place. Then I used a ball of aluminium foil wrapped up with aluminium wire, and I drill into the torso to insert it, then I mix up quite a lot of leftover clay of different colors to have enough of it. I first wrapped up some cotton all around the head and then placed some aluminum foil around it. I knew the aluminum foil will reduce the movement but I needed to build up some volume and have a good base to apply my clay. Then I covered the whole thing with clay throughout and shaping it and I start to shape the head of the bear. I create some eye sockets and place the little bowl of pre-cooked FIMO into it. I thought those black eyes are more realistic with what a bear eyes would look like, but it didn't look really friendly at that stage, so I wasn't completely convinced. I had some leftover of the eyes that I used for my puppet, and since the story is that it's the actual character that turned into a bear, I thought I might as well use those eyes. And as soon as you put them in, you can see that it's got so much more character and life to it. It's not realistic, but you know what? It's a clay puppet. It's not a real bear anyway. So I keep shaping it, adding a little nose and start to work on the fur. For that, I've mixed up different colors of clay and apply some sausages before scouting them together very gently and slowly and building it up. Then I start to work on the pose, adding some darker color into it, make some holes into it and place the little clothes that I've pre-cooked earlier with some black FIMO. Keep at it for the legs, adding the black nose. adding the clothes and the feet. And when working on textures such as fur, it's really important to have some good lighting. So I have my LED lights above it, and I recently invested into a secondary light, which is even better, so I have the best light throughout. It wasn't the easiest puppet to animate, but it was a good test and I'm really happy I've done it. The other animal that I've enjoyed working with is the badger. 
So for the skeleton of the badger, I follow a similar method. Work with aluminium wire first and two part epoxy putty. And then I realized I'm going to need to add a rig for this one because the pores are so small, I'm not going to be able to insert some wing nuts into them. So I use some square brass tube to create the rig and I create two puppets so I have always a backup. Those are the little brass tube that I've used to create the rigs. And those are the size I've used to make sure they fit into each other. I cover the whole skeleton with some FIMO and start shaping it. Made some eye sockets and placed the little balls of pre-cooked FIMO into it. Then I really cleaned up my hand and started to work with the white FIMO. If you don't have clean hands, you're going to make a mess straight away. Add my little nose and start to work with the fur and cover the whole body with fur. It takes some time, but it's worth it and it really gives it character. I'm so glad I've done two little badger because as soon as I start animating the badger, I had to press the clay and obviously you press into the fur that you just sculpted in. So I was glad I was able to swap the badger in between scene to have a nice clean badger for the next one. So to make the rig, I've cut a little piece of this square brass and I took some thicker wire. I file it down until it fits into the little brass square and use a bit of super glue to hold it in place. Then I cover the whole wire with some black permanent marker. So when it comes to animate it, I needed to have the wire holding from the side to be able to bring the badger from behind the tree. So I've placed the wire in position first, file it down on both sides, then you super glue on both sides and covered with a little metal plate. So it's probably more than needed, but I can guarantee it was not going anywhere. It was firmly hold in place. And then I can very gently position my little badger on top of this rig and then place the rig exactly where it needs to be. So this avoid me touching the badger too much to, to remove the fur. So I was able to use only the rig to slowly move it forward up to the point that I needed to move the head, for example, and then I needed to use my fingers. But until then, I was able to just hold the rig. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that it gave you the confidence to make a puppet of your own. So now next time I'm going to show you some behind the scenes of my stop motion animation. See you next time. Take care.